Today we're going to be looking at the silver problem clock tree. So in this question, Farmer John's barn has N rooms, and so these N rooms are going to be connected by various corridors. And in each one of these rooms, there's going to be a clock pointing to a certain time. So every time Bessie walks into a room, she's going to move that clock forward one hour. And so what we're going to do is we want Bessie to basically be able to start in some amount of rooms, and we want to basically give the amount of rooms she could start in so that she can move all of the clocks to 12. So let's go look at the algorithm for this question. So the algorithm we're going to use for this question is actually going to be using a biparty graph. And so the first main observation we can make before doing this question is we can tell that this is going to be a graph question. And this is because we know that if we have multiple rooms that we can treat as nodes and different hallways in between them, we can treat those as edges and therefore have a graph with nodes connected by various edges. And so now that we know this, what we can actually do is we can create a biparty graph. And so let's actually look at a brief example beforehand. Let's assume that we only have two nodes, one and two. Now, there are different scenarios we can consider. Let's assume first if they have one differing between them. In that case, what we can actually do is we can have Bessie start out, let's say, on the bigger one, assuming that we have this one as 10 and 11. And we can have Bessie move between the rooms until one of them, or both of them, reach 12. And so, let's say we start at room 2. So, room 2 moves to room 1. It's going to do this, and then we get 11, 11, back, 11, 12, back again, 12, 12. And so, in this scenario, if the two differ by 1, we know that they can both reach 12. And so even if we're something like 9 and 10, if we keep adding on, we know that eventually they will reach 12, 12. Now, let's say they're the same. So let's say in this case, 11, 11. Well, in this case, let's try it. We can start at either room since they're symmetrical. And let's say we move here, 12, 11, back, 12, 12. So if they differ by 1, we also know that it is possible to get both of them to 12. Now let's say we differ by something bigger than 1. In this case, we have an example here with 9 and 11, and let's say they differ by 2. What we can actually do is we can start on either one of them. Let's say we start here and then move here to increase. Then we get 10, 11, go back, 10, 12, go back, 11, 12, go back, 11, 1, if we have two nodes with a difference greater than 1, it's actually not going to be possible to move them both to 12. And so if you'll notice, when we move, when Bessie moves between the rooms, the difference between the two clocks can only be itself or itself plus 1. So since they have a difference of 1 here, they can only differ by 1 and 0. And in this case, when they differ by 0, it can only, again, differ by 0 and 1. And then if we have more than one, it'll only just differ by, say, this is two and this is one. And so what we can actually notice is that if we have a difference in the clocks of anything more than one, it's not going to be possible to move them both to 12. And so with a biparty graph, what happens is we have two different groups and we split all of the nodes in the graph into these two groups. And so let's say we have this example graph here from the test case. What we're actually going to do is we're going to create a coloring. We're going to DFS once and only once to color the nodes where we have two colors, one for each group in the biparty graph, where no parent and child are part of the same color. And so the reason for this is because what we're actually going to do is we're going to turn this graph into something like these two nodes here where we can continually move back and forth between these nodes, adding one to either side. So I'll explain this in a bit. Let's first color the graph. So if we color this with blue, and then we know that it's connected here, meaning this has to be a different color. Then we know that since this is yellow, we have to connect these and this. We can color the graph so that no parent and child have the same color. And we can split these into groups. So in this case, we have one, three, four, and two. So effectively what we're doing is we're turning a scenario with this graph into these two groups where these two groups represent 
the two nodes. If they differ by one, in some scenarios, we will be able to basically get everything to 12. And more specifically, if you do a couple examples, you'll find out that the group with the greater value here, if we start there, then we can be able to turn everything to 12. So our answer is just going to be the number of nodes in this group. If they're the same, then we know that it's just going to be the entire thing, because no matter where we start, it'll always end up at 12. And if it's anything else, then the answer is just going to be zero. And so we can basically split our answer into these three categories. So effectively, what we've done is we've used a bi-party graph, but we've basically turned our graph, after coloring it using, say, a BFS or a DFS, into different groups, with our groups being the bi-party graph groups. And for these groups, depending on their sums, depending on the different values or the difference between these two sums, we can tell whether or not we can get the value of all of the clocks to be 12. So let's go look at the code for this question. So the first thing we're going to do is create a couple of variables. And so the actual code for this question isn't too hard. We just have the four main variables where we're going to store for every group the sum and the nodes. And so we're going to have group 0 and group 1. We're also going to have the edges and A for our input. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to read in the input. And so I'm just going to open up the file and then read it in. And then we're going to color the nodes. And so in order to color the nodes, we're actually going to do a DFS. And so over here, I'm going to create my DFS function. And so there are two main parts of this DFS. We're going to have three parameters being I, our current node, color, the current color, which is either zero or one, and then parent. So parent can actually be replaced with a visited array, but what parent basically does is it replaces the entire visited array by just giving us the parent that led us to its current node. And so the first part of this is just updating the color. And so we're just going to check which color it is. And depending on which one it is, we're just going to add one to the number of nodes. And then we're going to add the A value to the sum. And after that, we're just going to loop through its children. And again, parent is going to be useful here because it basically makes sure we don't go back and visit parent. And so for each one of the children, we're just going to DFS with its value, the opposite color. So if it's zero, then it's going to become one. And if it's one, it's going to become zero. And then I as its parent. And so again, you can just replace the parent with visited. But other than that, it's a very typical DFS, except we're just going to include a color. And so after we've colored our groups, all we have to do is we're going to go through the three scenarios. So again, the first scenario is just if we have the same amount, so if we have the same value modulo 12, then we're just going to output n. And this just means we can start anywhere. And then the second scenario is if one group has a difference of one, meaning that after modulo 12, they have a difference of one. What we're going to do is we're going to output the group with the greater amount. And so then we're just going to run our DFS function. And we're going to look at the three main possibilities. So first, we can either check if they have the same mod. And if so, then that just means we can start anywhere. And the second scenario is if they have a difference of one. And depending on which group is greater, Whoever has the sum, the greater sum, we're just going to output the number of nodes in that group. So if sum 1 is greater, then we're just going to output the amount of nodes in group 1. And if sum 0 is greater, then we're just going to output the number of nodes in group 0. And so finally, if they differ by more than 1, then we're just going to output 0 since there's no way to get all 12.